All right, g'day there. I'm Richard Musgrave Evans in Australia, and today we're getting out the biggest canvas possible. Now this is a clear primed Belgian linen as usual, and I'm painting it from the side of my trailer, and that's about as big as I can fit in the trailer, so that is the biggest guns I've got. Right, as you can see here, we've got some absolutely beautiful water, so it's a great subject. Now the difference between what I normally do is quite often I'm working with fleeting moments and I'm working with bright colours. Today I've decided to go for a light overcast day. And so the concept of this painting is going to be about the subtle reflections and the subtle light rather than the other stuff. Okay, so as usual I've blocked in just the darks to compose my picture just to give me a feel of what I want to do. And it's all palette knife and oil paint. Okay, now I'll go for the biggest difference between that and that. Let's have a look, what is it? I might actually start by putting the water in. That's a beautiful thing, so it'd be good to get it in now, okay? It's quite chocolatey brown, because what's happened is it's got all the stain, the tannin stains from the gum tree leaves, landed in the water, and brewed up a beautiful, a beautiful brew of tea, basically, or chocolate. It's got that beautiful deep color. So let's try and maintain that throughout the painting. All right. Now near the edges of the bank, it's quite yellow open here, but there's also burnt sienna. I'll we'll just see what's going on. I'll mix up some burnt sienna and yellow acre there. This is only for the very edge, just to get that beautiful shallow water look. And then I'll get into deeper tones. Now I've got to remember this whole trail is on the angle of a hill, so the whole the whole painting is a bit sideways. So I've got to remember that. So as I'm Looking at the painting, standing back, I better twist my head a bit, otherwise the whole thing will be a bit lopsided. Okay. What do we got here? I might try a bit of burnt umber now to thicken her up a bit. Let's have a look. It actually needs to go deeper than that, so we'll throw a bit of blue. A bit of blue in the mix to really knock it down into a darker tone. Even a bit of magenta here and hang on, magenta and red. The foreground there's got kind of a red brown. I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but it's such a beautiful colour that it's worth trying to get that one in for sure. Now I'll just Let's get that blocked in. Up here the reflection of the bank's coming through a bit, which is a bit of green. Yellow ochre, ever so slightly just here. The keyed down version compared to the reflection is keyed down compared to the actual grass itself. What do we got there? There's the tree. Burnt sienna, deepen the tone a bit. Get those tones in. We're definitely working with a huge painting today. Now I'm just going to kind of block in where that reflection of that tree is coming down. Might do the same here too. That tree is kind of coming down this way. All right, back into the beautiful deep tones. basically getting the tones in first as quick as I can then I'll try and work out what's going on after that so they're all yellow acres and stuff for the reflection of this bank I mean this hill here drifts off into kind of greens and browns over here a bit of variety so I'll put that in a bit more keyed down than that it down with a few reds and blues just to kill it off a bit. A real neutral type of tone. Plenty of 
plenty of work to do on such a big painting. Plenty of work. Colour, we got the foreground, that beautiful, beautiful red, browns and golden colours. Mix that all in. Now you can put the strokes any which way you want at the moment. Put them in any which way you want, but later on we can try and maybe pull them down to give the illusion of the reflections. Okay. Right now. Okay, a bit more of this over here. Our browns, blues, reds, neutral tone. Now today, today I'm not doing any taping, I'm just going to go to the edges. Just want a big, powerful, simple work all the way to the edges. Basic tones in first. Yep, we've got plenty of work to do today. Plenty of work. Get those edges all lovely. I might just stand back and have a look. There's a tiny bit of sky reflection coming in here and there, so I've just jotted in a nice kind of key down sky reflection what we got. It's a very overcast day today, so it's a very neutral, nondescript, non-descriptive tone, just a key down colour. Let's just have a look what it is. What have we got? Put this in here and there. Put more blue and magenta. White. Yellow oak out of care it off a bit. Neutral. Tone. Okay now, a bit more blue and magenta. Just gonna highlight that pick out that reflection of that tree there. It's on a beautiful kind of purpley blue magenta y type of colour. Okay. Before I do, what I might do is take a bit of paint off here, change my mind on where that's going. That's the good thing about palette knives, you can take the paint off nice and thin, like I've done there, and that really softens it. I might just keep on going while I'm doing it. That's really giving it a soft quality, just pulling through like that. Let's have a look. Paper towel always comes in handy. Okay, where are we up there? What have we got? Bit of this. That tree is going to go about there. Over about so. Yeah. Right, getting the basic idea by putting them in ever so lightly for now, just suggesting. This one up here is a little bit browner, all the trees are different. A bit more brown, even red maybe. Half mix it to get that beautiful barky, trunky type of look. Right. 
got a beautiful spiral look so you can kind of spiral the paint on a bit because the trees have got that look about them. Okay, let's have a look. Paint everywhere all over me, hang on. I don't know what happened, but I'm starting to wear the paint all over me, so. Paint that off for a minute. Pull some of that paint off, make it thinner, like I was saying before. Pull through like that and wipe. Too bad down there. That's that tree. A little bit of pale colour in there for the sky coming in here and there. Okay, now I'll get that uh, bit of that hill in next, I reckon. Yeah. Yellow ochre, it's got a twang of green. We've had a bit of rain again, it's been getting very dry. It's just early summer now. It's actually quite hot, it doesn't look very hot here, but it's actually supposed to be 40 degrees today. And uh, so, what I did before I started, because it was a little hot and flustered, is I dropped my shirt in there, put it back on. So now my shirt's wet, it actually feels great. So, but in saying that, we've had a little bit of rain, so what's happened is instead of that being dry, it's greened out a bit more again. I've got yellow ochre here, I've got a bit of viridian green and white to lighten it. Maybe a bit of burnt sienna thrown into the mix. Plenty of yellow ochre. Half mix them so you get that beautiful random effect. That's way too much white in that mix. Here and there, hang on. Green, green and yellow ochre and burnt sienna. Lob them in. Mix up a bit of a neutral tone over here too, which is the colour of the earth. The earth is kind of a grey neutral tone with a twang of magenta in it. Not that far from the colour of the canvas, actually, the raw linen actually, but just a little bit more of magenta thrown in with it. wind around too, I'm quite protected here luckily, but there is a fair bit of wind around. Now I've got to work out how far I want to go up this hill, what I want to actually do. Deeper tones just here. A bit more shadowy. Dig out 
the exact right. Smear, smudge, do whatever you want. Bit more burnt sienna in that mix. Burnt sienna, muddy grey brown, burnt sienna. Stand back and have a look. Okay now, the shadow tones of that foliage up on there and those branches. What a neutral colour, burnt sienna, magenta and blue. Let's have a look. Blue and magenta. A bit more blue. Throw some burnt sienna in. Kind of a neutral, nondescript tone. with that. A bit thin leaf gaps for the uh, leaf gaps where the sky is coming through. Add a bit of green to the edge, a bit of the, it's not just the trunks, you've also got the foliage. Can hardly reach that, it's a bit of a shorty. All that green and yellow foliage thrown in on top, pull that through. I well, better watch out, I'll be wearing it. It's all fun. It's great fun getting into a painting this big. Blue. Just make more of a dusty mauve colour here with the magenta and the blue. It's always a good colour. Still a fair bit of brown here though, don't want to get too carried away. and greens in there. Slightly darker. Then Sienna, green. Pull some of that through here. Mix up a group of red and green and white there, and pull the yellow ink into it. Half mix that. You get a type of green sort of colour. Mix up the muddy brown of the earth again. A gentry, neutrally. Tons of paint there, tons. I like to work with a lot of paint in the foreground, really give that chunky feel. Let's have a look. Alright, now I haven't finished anything obviously, but I've got to work with the biggest differences. Always work around with what looks the least whatever. Now you can see there's a few things similar now, but the sky is just raw linen and that sky is a lighter tone so mix up the sky. Obviously there's going to be a lot of white in it today. I'll mix a slight magenta blue version over here. But I'm also going to mix right next to it a slight yellow ochre version. Half full, actually that yellow ochre one needs a bit of burnt sienna with it too. 
half pull them all together to get this beautiful kind of warm and cool overcast day. Filling up the negative spaces. Very lightly dragging. Feel like that corner up the sky, I reckon. Just clean knife, just pull it through it. Oh, hang on, got to get a clean knife. Hang on, before I keep doing with that one, I'll go to this end, put some of this in. Just lightly touch here and there. Know that the sky is coming through. So I've got the darks in first, and the sky is going in around it. Taking some paint off. Pulling through like so. Getting the draftsmanship of those trees by painting the negative space up to them. Have another look. Just going to go for the bigger knife for a while. It's a rip of this one. PK13 Art Spectrum. Beauty. Just want to pull through here, soften this area. It's not overly important. Pull that through. Pull that through a tab. Just softening a bit with this bigger knife. green colour down by the uh, down by the foreshore there so I'm gonna knock a bit in. Bit of burnt sienna with it. Back to this little knife for a minute. That big knife's good for smudging and doing whatever. The little knife just has a tad more control, as you can imagine. I'm just keying that down a little bit, a slightly keyed down version, to get into here. I'll 
Valenciana. Grab that. Now I'll get this other big knife again, and with this knife, I suppose I could get the paint off it, the majority of the paint. going to pull down straight and soft. Pull through straight and soft, wiping the knife each time obviously, as you would have heard me say before. Taking paint off there rather than adding. Taking a bit of paint off there and pulling upwards to give the illusion of grass and stuff. Pulling up through and lightly lifting it like the blades of grass are going up. What have we got up there in the sky? Let's have a look at this. There's a little bit of foliage every now and then, like so. We'll put it in, as in, I had all the shadow tones in of the foliage. Now I'm putting some of the light source tones where the, where the subtle light is grabbing a few of the leaves. Through to make that out of focus there. Yeah, there's a few more other trees and whatever on the bank, up on the hill here. I'm just going to put a few of them in. There's trees here and trees there. Just put them where they seem to work. There's a few dead ones lying around. Maybe to put the uh, knife pull up that way instead. It's good to pull up in a subdued landscape, subdued landscape like this. It's good to pull up the uh, subtle warm and cool reflections. And so there are subtle ones everywhere if you look close enough. So I've got a few warm tones in that tree. So I just put a few cool ones to mix it up. And that subtle warm and cool contrast really makes the painting pop then because you've got the complementary colours. Let's put that one in there. You've got the complementary colours. Warm and cool always works, even in a overcast landscape like this, or particularly in an overcast landscape because you need you need that power you've got to get the power from somewhere that is if you're not going to work with every detail if you're going to go for the big impression you need something that gives you drama warm and cool is always a good one them up so that they're not a continual thing. Too much green on the knife, get rid of that green, that one, that. More of a brown tone on there. Let's have a look. Good, but what I want to do is blend some of this foliage where the sky and the foliage meet. It just looks good if it's a little bit softer.
pull through like that. Might have been more convincing if there's a bit of softness going on. Now paint some sky coming through with that beautiful bright colour that I just got off on the edge of the knife. deeper tones in here, I'm just putting them in, everything's, this particular area I'm making a bit on the fine because that's not my focal area, I want, <clears throat> I want this to be the focal area, so that's why I'm putting in more of the, uh, more of the contrast and whatever, is where I want people's eyes to be drawn. Putting in some of those darks that I missed out on, this dark work too. Whoops. I think I just heard a branch falling down over there. Get those dark trunks in, those contrasting trunks, beautiful. Some of that paint off there, I just want that to stand out a bit more. And what I'm doing here, <coughs> oops, pull through. Just doing the opposite thing, I'll take a bit of paint off back in a minute. I was doing the opposite, I was just keying that down a bit there because I don't want your eye drawn there. time because it's up there in the in the heavens it's quite soft up there but it's nice getting a bit mucky I think I'll clean her up just lightly pull through here to soften that see that makes more of a foliage look clean nice Flick some paint into the heavens then. Got to get, got to get the knife absolutely clean for these skies. Pull through. Yeah. Just got to stand back all the time to just get the general vibe of what I'm actually doing, how it's all coming together. Clean that knife. Along now, I'll just get some red and brown just on the edge of this tree here. I want to create a bit more of a highlight and accent there. Oop, what am I doing? Take that paint off. Clean it off now. I'll just get stuck into a slightly smaller knife here. Just get the gear off it first. Get all the paint off. Yeah. Red. A bit of blue. Knock it down into a darker tone.
always looking around, working around the picture, never finishing anything until you're happy, like just keep working round and round and round, never finishing anything too much first. If you come back to it later and go, oh, I thought that was finished, but I've overworked that area, I've underworked this area, it's best to just work around the canvas. Tree there. Put a couple more uprights there where there's a few trees coming through in the backdrop. Now, let's get some straight yellow oak and white. Plenty of white in the mix. What I'm trying to do is build up some accents where the sky is brighter. Yeah, paint off my hands. I seem to be getting plenty of that at the moment. Okay, go for the slightly bigger knife is the medium size one, so the one I use the most, medium size. Yeah, I just pull through with some confidence. To soften. The tricky thing this guy, it's got to be contrasting but soft but hard. It's got to stand out but it's also got to be soft against the foliage. Interesting thing to try and do. Pull her in a little bit lighter here. Getting a bit low on burnt sienna there. Yellow ochre. Trying to lighten up a little bit in the focal areas here. Some downward mark, some upward mark. All right. Always got to keep the knife clean. A little bit soft now. I just feel like that sky is too hard. It's drawing my attention too much. Every time I stand back, so I've got to soften it. Okay, 
down there. Only that, that broadening of the marks adds some good interest to the picture too when you do that. some of that paint back over there to give the illusion of the grass again which I lost a little bit a second ago. Put some uh, sticks and stuff lying around on the ground. Pallet knife on edge to get that. Gives the illusion of detail when you put those fine marks in. It's all an illusion. back and have a look. Mixing up a bit of an earthy tone with just some neutral colours, like before. I'm almost out of burnt sienna there, I should put more in. I'll add a bit of red in there. we got here. Pretty neutral, so. Bit of a path there coming through. Now it's this nice. Just going to get rid of that edge, like sort of soften it so it's not an obvious thing. Stop you going out of that side of the picture. Take a bit of paint off here to, uh, with this, I can draw this trunk better. By the, I've already got the trunk there, but if I actually get the pallet off on the underside and lift, I can improve the draftsmanship finish the shape of the tree off a lot better. Even here, like that one's a bit thick. Pull it in, get some draftsmanship going. Some of these pallet knife marks that I put in could just look better with a better, bit better shape. Oh, maybe that can stay, let's have a look. Now we'll pull that into there to shape it. Thing there for something different. Have a look. Getting there now. I'll just clean the edge of that up like this. Just taking a little bit of that paint off the top so we've got a neater edge. That's just sliding off. I'll put this in the bin. I'll do the same here. I'll just take that paint off the edge there with a cleaner, cleaner knife. That's good. Because I haven't taped off, I'm just trying to get the edges all neat and lovely so it looks great inside. When you get it back inside a house or something, or a gallery, 
I remember all these paintings are for sale too, so uh, just uh, direct message me or do whatever and uh, I'll let you know how it all works. I do free shipping worldwide. I just figure that's, that's a fair enough deal. If someone wants the painting and they feel like you know, maybe that extra price of the uh, shipping is putting them off, well, I'm happy to cover that. So everyone's happy. Just adding a few more lines and whatever. Those little lines make such a difference to the finish of the painting. Because you're working in the order of visual importance in the area where you want your eyes drawn. You put these little marks and refinements and then in areas that you don't want to be interesting or you don't want the eye drawn, you make it out of focus and the contrast really brings the in focus things into your into your focal point, you really see them, they jump out. I'm continuing to draw a few more branches here and there. Because the order of visual importance now is telling me that there's some really nice branches here that could uh, go in. breeze coming up. Okay, now, just looking at that, I like that, where that highlight is, but I feel like the light's catching it too much, so I'd rather just thin the paint ever so slightly. Now I'm drawing the negative spaces again, which is instead of drawing the branches, I'm drawing the shape of the sky behind it. Just slowly bringing it all together, like I said, working in that order of visual importance. Bringing a bit of sky in here, taking a bit out there, going by what feels right at the time. That's why you got to stand back all the time. Pick up a bit of this grassy sort of stuff. Whoops. Wanted it to be a thinner line than that. Wanted some thinness. Let's see if I can get it with an off on edge. Now that one's too thick, I should be able to take it off though, like I said, we'll get that knife all clean. Rub back, see if I can get that blade thin, see that? Got saved. Saved at the last hour. I've got that branch there, I'll put a key down version of it here. So it's not as bright, oh, there's a fly. Because it's in the water and it's in a because it's in the water and it's a reflection, it doesn't have the intensity. So key down. Key down version.
just softening these edges here. Making it, ugh, it was, hang on, put this in the bin. Making that stand out less by making it out of focus. Like that. finger there just to wobble that down a bit. Wobble that down. Okay now there's a bit more magenta and blue in that mix down low. In that reflection of the sky. Got a beautiful red. Red and blue basically, let's have a little bit more blue, and more white, quite key down, let's have a look. Now get the big, bigger knife, the middle size knife, yeah, pull through, clean. Pull straight through. Just adding those softer tones in the foreground. Flies. <laughs> now softening. looking pretty good. Just fine tuning a few bits here now. Softening a few bits, hardening a little bit here and there just to bring it up how you like it. The idea is to paint in one session, plain air in one go. And so I always prefer to get it finished here rather than coming home and saying oh, I wish I'd done a little bit more. I prefer to actually do it here. And just adding, there we go. Adding a few greys and stuff, a bit of foliage here. Like I said, I don't want to stand out here too much, so I'll pull, pull through to make it fairly soft and non-eventful. Non tree there. That's way too dark for that tree. Putting a few of those reflections. Uh, they're matching what's going on up above them. Reflection here and a reflection there. Pull through here to soften. Find a picture like this, it's all about the subtlety. Because we've got subtle light rather than oranges and blues and sunsets and all that dramatic stuff, because we've got a subtle light, it's best to work with subtle reflections, pull out the subtleness, because you can't use the big brights. So you've got to get the interest and the impact in other ways. And like I've said, 
that sky looks like it's white, but it's got subtle mixes of pale magentas and subtle mixes of ochres, so you've got that warm and cool contrast. And the same thing throughout here, there's warm and cool tones, warm and cool tones in the trunks, and the softness of the water, so you can bring out the real crispness around the focal areas. And that way, on an overcast day like this, you can still get a really nice effect. Put the knife that way, I reckon I'll work upwards. Now what am I doing here? I'm just actually adding a little bit of earth colours. I can kind of see a bit of a track going through there, which I kind of like. The track from the cattle walking through. Got a bit of it here. I kind of like it and it's a good contrast, like I was saying just then. So breaks the picture up into warm and cool tones. Clean that a little. Okay, let's have a look what we got. Constantly just uh, still doing a bit of refining. It's such a big painting that uh, such a big painting you can't leave it underdone. So I'm constantly just adding little bits here and there to make sure I've got the blinking thing finished enough before I decide to stop. Stand back for a minute. So I cut a little bit off that and pull it down like that. Adding a little bit here and there where just a little bit of a you know earthy bank coming down to meet the water. So there's always a lot of subtleness where those two things meet. The water and the land meet. There's always refinement and subtle. You put the softness in the reflections, and then put the subtlety right on the edge of the bank, it'll pop. Little, little fine marks right there. All right, well, that about do. As you can see, I've pretty much got the big impression, and uh, at the same time. 
there's a lot here, a lot of subtlety and a lot of softness and hardness and all the other stuff. Hang on, here we go again, I'm starting here. That's better, a bit better grass and shit there. Just pulling up the grass and shit with those trees. There we go. Yeah, not too bad. I might just pick that one out too. I'm just scraping paint off to get the shape of things. One little tiny bit more. What have we got here? Like that. All right, yeah, so that's about it. So what I'll do is I'll get the camera off and let you have a look. Now, <laughs> it is fun painting this big, I've got to admit. I mean, finding those little fleeting moments is good too, but I just love getting the biggest canvas you can possibly get around with, standing out in front of nature and painting that. That's just, that is the ultimate fun. And, like I said before, calling myself a minimalist, You've got to keep everything as simple as you possibly can to capture the big impression. Now, if you want to do something this big in that amount of time, you've got to work out ways to minimalise the amount of effort to get the biggest effect. And so, working with the knives and working with oil paint in this way is a good way and a minimalist type of way to get the overall impression. Alright, no worries, I'll get the camera off. Cheers.